All right, so we're going to take a look at a race file that was put out by a race organization. Uh, it got brought to my attention, and we're going to just use this as an example of how to work with events and the GPS files that those events or those organizations put out to you. Unfortunately, sometimes these files are a mess. Uh, traditionally, most of these organizations are used to working with old Lowrance fish finder GPSs, which are chart plotters which it doesn't matter if you have a bunch of lines that are squiggly and you just slap them together. It doesn't matter. If you have a Garmin GPS or lead nav to where we handle navigation, well, it doesn't matter because those route files have to be coherent and they have to travel in the right direction. So just down and dirty, looking at this file up front, I can tell the entire race is backwards. So they probably took a collection of tracks over the years or last year's track and they just handed it out and flipped the rally markers around and put that out as a race course. I don't know, but the best I can do, just like you, is use lead nav's tools to go in and kind of interpret what they want you to do. Uh, so let's just take a look at it real quick. So I'm on the Best in Desert website for the Mint 400. So it looks like they put out motorcycle, car, truck, and a Lowrance and a Garmin file. Now again, the only GPS file that anyone ever has to put out is a GPX, which in this case they have listed as a Garmin file. GPX is a universal file type. All the new Lowrances, Garmin, Lead Nav, they all handle a GPX file. So race organizations, all you ever have to put out is here's your GPS file, one file. That would make it very simple. But in this case, they put out two, and they listed them as Lowrance and Garmin. Garmin is the GPX file. They also have up here a PDF, which, quite honestly, this is this is a pretty poor PDF. I, mean, I don't know if I can download this and see if, it, if it's a better format downloaded. Uh, doesn't look like I can download it. But I don't know about I don't know about you, but I can't interpret what's going on in there at all. So let's just worry about this main race loop for now. Uh, the organization's gonna have to clarify what's going on in here, and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm gonna go back here and let's click on the Garmin file. You can see right there, it's a GPX file. It's a universal file type, so I can open it up in lead nav. Open. Import it as its own collection. Imported, one track, 163 markers. All right, let's go to that one track and take a look. And let's go back into that track stats. And you can see the mileage, and it's pretty close, but that really, is going to be off. The mileage is never going to be accurate. Even where they put their rally markers, they, they do a good job of putting a rally marker, probably using a, a trip odometer, and marking it as a fixed GPS point. That way, it's a fixed point on the earth. Uh, using track files between different GPS units, it's never going to be accurate. Uh, Google Earth is a little bit more accurate because it has 30 meter elevation increments, but also in that 30 meters, there could be a cliff. So it's not super precise either. We use 3D terrain models that are down to like 15 centimeter, one meter. I mean, even then, I mean, you're, you're super accurate as far as distances go because you're using that, uh, that level of terrain. But still, it's not going to be super accurate unless they go out there and with a GPS market and say, hey, this is rally marker five. Uh, so just know when you're scrolling through routes that they're never going to be exactly accurate. They're always going to, depending on terrain, be a mile or two off. So let's go in here and hide the HUD to make it easier to see. All right, let's take this track and make it into something that we can work with. Take that track, convert it to a route. Now you can see it's a red race route. And if I back up, I got one track and one route. I'm gonna leave this track in here because it's a good reference to leave underneath the uh, route file as we're editing. I'm gonna go into that route file, hit edit. And again, 
I don't know what's going on in here. Uh, so, and you can see why you got, I know what traditionally happens in this area. I mean, I know they're going to build out the course, the short course and all that. Um, but you can see the finish and start are right here. They're a little bit separated. But if I hold on the start, you can see that's mile marker 118, which we know isn't right. And also when I go to edit the route, it puts us at the end of the race route or the end of the route file. So from our classes from lead nav level one, you know this is how you build out a race course or build out a, a route, I should say. So if I back up, boom. All right, so you can see that the end's there. It's not even at the start and finish, it's out here, right? So let's just focus Let's just focus really. I mean, this is road section, so we, we're not gonna get lost here. So let's focus our attention out here to where we do know what's going on, hopefully. Um, you can see they have their mileage marked, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then coming back, they have, you know, 100, 101, 102. Well, let's, let's hold on the route to see what's going on there. You can see the mileage is 113, all right? And it's supposed to be five. Let's look back here. It should be in the hundreds. Well, it's 17. So we know right now, looking at that, that the race route has been given to you backwards. So we're gonna cut that section out, the main race loop, and we're just gonna flip it in lead nav. So let's go right here to where they connect. And just so we can kind of get a better feel for what's going on. Let's uh, see if we can separate, put a little separation in there so we can see what's going on, right? All right, now let's, we know this is the beginning of the route line and this is the end, opposite of what they're telling you. So let's double tap with the pro pack on the, on the route going out and let's double tap where it's coming back in. So I'm gonna mess it up right now, scrolling out, but you can see I selected the entire loop segment. All right, to start this process, if I try to continue, it's just gonna get all, it's gonna get all messy. So I'm just gonna go back in here, go to back, edit. It's gonna kick us to the end of the route line. We'll go back here, do it again, double tap, double tap, and let's copy this section out. And let's name it main, loop copy so now you can see we have two route files main loop and the original mess so I'm gonna go in here to the main loop let's just change the color of it make it easier let's scroll up so you can see we we didn't get rid of it we copied this segment out of the race route and we duplicated it into its own route so now Again, you can see it's going backwards. 800. 99. 800 feet. So it's going backwards according to their rally markers. So we're just going to go up here to menu and we're going to reverse it. It's been flipped. Now let's hold on it. Feet. Yeah. So now it's going in the right direction. So now when we run this race route or we edit it, it'll navigate correctly in the right direction. Now again, I took a look at this file and it gets a little bit questionable towards the start and finish line. Otherwise, right now we could go in and find out where the start is, cut that segment out, and then go back in and find where the finish is, cut that segment out, and then we could merge all three sections together in the right order, make sure they're traveling in the right direction, and it'll splice all three together into a nice, clean race route that you can just hit run on, you can do edits, you can do pre-runner on it and do all that good stuff on it. And then it's a nice, clean race route file. But right now, let's take a look, and I, I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna interpret what the race organization's trying to uh, put out as being the actual course, um, but let's take a look. My problem with it right now is if I go back to the main race route, 
You can see we cut the main loop out of it, so we're good up until that point coming back in. I'm having trouble. I know, first of all, the race route ends here, and I know they're going to change some of this stuff around. But right now, you know, traditionally, I know it leaves. They do a start here, and they come out this way. Well, right now, if you look at this, the rally marker is 111, 112, which is correct going out. 115, 116, 117, 119. So I'm really just not sure what they have going on here. I can assume that this is the start. It's going to come back into here. And I can copy that section out and call that start. And then I can assume that, well, we know this is the end of the route right here, line, the actual line itself. So I'm going to start over here. I know that I can go, let's just double check the mileage, 427, 6. Okay, so I know I can come in here and double tap this and trace this out. Do the start here. And I can probably copy that section out and call it finish. Right? And when you're doing this stuff, just remember, you get to a certain point, duplicate the collection to back up your work. Because if you get this wrong and you splice everything together in the wrong order or some of it's reversed, you're going to get this big spider web effect of segments connecting in the front. And it's easier just to go back and figure out what you did wrong and start from scratch. So always, when you start getting to this heavy lifting editing, just go back and duplicate the collection so you have a backup because you can't take it back once you connect everything or if you deleted the old routes. So I'm gonna go right now, I'm gonna back up, I'm gonna duplicate, I'm gonna go back, see we're in this collection that we're working on, I'm gonna duplicate it and call it backup. So now I have a backup of everything to this point. I'm gonna go back into the working copy and you can see we have, let's, let's uh, take the main loop we, we colored that yellow. Let's take the start and color that green. And we'll leave the finish loop red, right? So now I can know, I can get rid of, hopefully, the main uh, original mess. So I'm going to delete that. All right, so now I have these three. Let's take a look at them real quick. So here's the start in green. There's a segment where it's coming back on itself that we didn't really um, copy out. We could have took this as another segment, right? And there's what we think is the finish. So right now, let's just, let's just see what we got. Let's see if these are going in the right direction, edit, at least as far as the line. You can see it starts at two feet. Yeah. So that's going in the right direction. Let's make sure the finish is going towards the finish. Yep. Mileage is counting up. All right, let's join these together. On any one of these route segments, I can go to join multiple routes. And then you just want to make sure this is a list of the routes in your menu. So if there's another route in here that you don't want to add to this merge, you got to make sure you remove it from this, this join list or it's going to splice that one in and make a big mess. So we know we want all three of these to join together. you got to make sure these are in the right order. So start, main loop, finish. If you mix this up or if some of these segments are reversed and you didn't put them in the right direction, this is where you're going to get a big spider web effect of front to backs joining together. So that looks about right. Let's see what happens. we got it backed up. We'll put main race. All right, they've been joined. And now let's cross our fingers and just hope we got it right. And let's delete. I recommend taking a look before you do this, but I'm pretty confident. I'm gonna delete the main loop. 
We we'll delete the finish. And now, if we cross our fingers, we should have a complete race in here. And you can see wherever we joined them together, we have a little joined waypoint that lets you know where they were spliced. So, let's take a look. You can see there's separation here between the start, that's fine. That's 19, that's 118. Now let's go out here. We know that this is the start segment and it goes out. And, but we, this is the highway or the little road section that we didn't cut a segment out of. So it, it's not following that. So we can go in here and edit. I knew it was a simple point to point section. So all we gotta do is put some segments in here and drag this. Again, if I accidentally hold off this route line too far, I'm gonna draw a segment to the end, from the end of the route, because it's route builder. So make sure you hold on it. Hold on it. Boom. And I would say, That's pretty good for the start. Let's do the same thing on the finish. It's pretty good for the finish there. Now we can get rid of these uh, pins if we want by just clicking on delete them. And now you can see we have a complete, coherent race route. And again, we can double check this. 400, if we come out here, see how accurate we are out here. There's, that's supposed to be mile marker 102. It's 109. Again, this is never gonna be accurate. Uh, you got rolling terrain. The GPS tracks that they gave you are off of different units. When lead nav brings them in, it's considered on flat terrain elevation model uh, outside of what the GPS file already provided you. So there's always going to be discrepancies between the distances and the route. Um, but there is a they put a rally marker there in place, so reference their rally marker. And you can also see they put the danger right there as a marker itself. So I could. I could go to their website and we could pull up the dangers and let's just look, what was that? That was 102.5 extreme danger solar field fence. Let's go back to lead nav and that's where, right there, 102.5, I can aim at it, drop, danger, I can put extreme danger solar fence whatever they told us and I can go through here and mark the rest of these dangers in but that's it I just wanted to show you how to clean up a sloppy race file handed out by an organization you can see how easy it is to fix those track files get them spliced together and put them out into a single GPX file that's all you got to hand out one GPS file it should look like, hey, here's your PDF maps, and here's your GPS file, which is a GPX format, which you can load into a Lorance, a Garmin, or LeadNav. One file and done.